What happens when you get into debt? You threaten me, sir. And you can't. I'm going to struggle to pay this. Or won't pay it back. It doesn't matter what you want, sir. Unfortunately, that's the law. We meet the High Court enforcement agents who are pushed to their limits. Evil! You have to down to hell! Well, I'll smash the window then. It's false imprisonment. Dealing with desperate debtors. Hello? In dramatic situations. You want to stand here like a big man? Leave it. Talk to me. Talk to me. Push me about. We meet the people who are losing their homes. You must leave the property today. Today? And their possessions. The desks are going. <laughs> Everything. You're joking. Okay. Because whatever happens... High court enforcement! If you can't pay, they'll take it away. Latest reports show that Britain's high streets are declining rapidly. Shops and restaurants are closing down faster than new ones are opening. In the last 12 months, the number of retail premises shutting their doors has almost tripled to just under 6,000 a year. Stuart McCracken and Ian Taylor are High Court enforcement agents. They travel around the country, repossessing homes, chasing debts and seizing goods when debtors can't or won't pay. Our next job is going to be, I think, it's an Indian takeaway. Today, they're in Nottingham to recover nearly £3,000 worth of unpaid rent owed to the landlord of a takeaway shop. Spice to go. Spice to go. If the defendant, Shoeb Sikandari, doesn't pay, the agents will seize goods to offset the debt today. Well, oh, I could do with a curry now as well. Nice Rogan Josh. Oh, lovely. Oh. Hi, mate, you all right? Sorry, I'm just scared, but I just knocked. All right, OK, no problem at all. My name's Mr McCracken, that's my colleague, Mr Taylor. We've been sent in uh, by the landlord, mate, to collect outstanding rent. Um, the total amount here we're to collect to prevent the removal of goods is £2,972.80. By the landlord? Yeah, by the landlord. What are you talking about by landlord? Yeah, the landlord who owns the building. For what? So we're here to collect outstanding rent, sir, OK, to the value of £2,972.80. We are paying for all who okay. came and gone through. It's, it, apparently not, sir. That's the reason why we're here today. We got it wrong. Well, we haven't got it wrong. I can prove it to you that yeah. I pay every month okay. every time. Shoeb has been running the takeaway shop for eight months. He claims he's up to date with his rent and owes his landlord nothing. You see, they don't understand, man. What rent you after? Do you right, sir, can I explain to you? OK, we're here to do a job, OK? What job? I'll be getting my colleague to do an inventory of goods. You can do whatever you want. I'm not paying okay. you a penny. We can't get dragged in to the stories that we hear from defendants. If we did, we wouldn't collect anything. The defendants on there rightfully owe that money, regardless of what story the defendants tell us. Shoeb is adamant he isn't in rent arrears. Backed up by his friend Jahinga, he shows the agents his bank statements. So he hasn't OK, can it. you see on my bank okay. account then, please? Vazak. What's, the, what's the other date? 08, yeah? Mm -hmm. Is that OK? Yeah. 1,160. 1,160, yeah? yeah. It's gone to him, yeah? What's this? The turn away, yeah? That's the tenth, yeah. The, the moon before, yeah? Yeah. So everything is clear? Everything is clear. Okay. That's ridiculous, this is. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry, I know it's your job. No, no, I understand, sir. It seems Shoeb isn't in arrears. Stuart must find out why the landlord has taken action against him. He calls the landlord's solicitor. From what we can see, the defendant sent the money over um, on each quarter. Yeah, he has sent the money. I'll, I'll, I'll pass you over now, so just give me two seconds. I'll pass you over, because he'll be able to explain to you. Better this is solicitor, yeah? Hello? OK, what rent? Which month? What are you talking about? Yes, I have nothing, one penny oil. I'm paying every month, I'm clear till today. Why would you send somebody else to my shop? I paid everything on time. Because, like I said, everyone What else. are you talking about, man? Just, he doesn't understand. You know no. what kind of place this is? From, from, from what we can see, uh, the payments oh, have been going out each month. Um, we've seen... It's Sorry, sir? But then, the landlord's solicitor tells Stuart the real reason behind the debt. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. 
you, you have to pay the quarter in advance. That's what it is. But he's not paying it a quarter in advance. He's paying it by monthly. So he's still due. He's still due the quarter. It turns out that the debt is not for arrears after all. It's for two months' rent. Shoeb should have paid up front. At the end of the day, sir, it, it needs collecting. Thank you. Bye. Stuart must convince Shoeb that he does owe the money and needs to pay now. Fact of the matter is, sir, mm. what you have to do, you have to pay a quarter in advance. Mm. That's exactly what it says on your lease, OK? That's what it says on your lease, OK? But what you're doing at the moment, sir, is you're paying it monthly by month by month. Are you telling yeah. me you must book to the landlord? That's not what it says on the lease, sir. After yeah. Every month... So at the moment... You transfer 1160 to my account. But it's not what's in your lease, OK? I know it's okay. lease, but you said... So, that's fine. But he said he agreed. He said, OK, you can pay the my landlord. So okay. you doing it? Despite Shoeb's claims that the landlord agreed to monthly payments, the arrangement is not written into the lease. Stuart and Ian are duty-bound to enforce the debt. I'm going to give you 20 minutes you to try and raise his funds. I need to make you aware, sir, that if we don't receive that payment, we'll be bringing gas engineers for the equipment to be removed. Tw 20 minutes, sir. All right. 20 minutes. The clock is ticking. Shoeb should be trying to raise the cash. But he's not listening to the agents. The lend is clear. I can show yes. No, no. We've explained this. The fact of the matter is, if you do not make payment, yeah. we will be removing goods. Despite Shoeb's protests, the landlord's solicitor has given the agents clear instructions. Shoeb has ten minutes left on Stewart's deadline to come up with the cash. Now they must start taking an inventory in case they have to remove goods. I'll start I'm still a man of my word. The landlord yeah. was agreed to okay. pay monthly because the business is yeah. no good. OK, still a man of our word, and we've still got another 10 minutes, sir. So okay. try and raise some money yeah, in the next yeah. 10 no, minutes. No, no money, right. I guess okay. I'll money in my That's fine, no problem. You can do you want. No problem. It seems that Shoeb's takeaway business has fallen on hard times. But if the agents remove his kitchen equipment, he won't have a business to run at all. I will have nothing. I'm not, I'm not behind anything. I've got 16 pounds in my account. With the business is really bad at the moment. And I can't afford it. How long am I going to do? People try and use their business situation to try and put us off collecting debt, but nothing's going to change our opinion on that, regardless of what the defendant says. The deadline is up. With no payment in sight, the agents have no choice but to start seizing assets. Right, um, can you start switching all the equipment off, please? OK, well, you switch yeah. off yourself. No, no, I know. You're not touching my stuff. I, I will be, police. I will be. You're not touching my stuff. OK, so, do me a favour, can you start um, on, um, turning off the equipment in there, yeah. please? Yes. Yeah. You you're not touching nothing. I'm telling you now, you're not touching anything until now. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't going to stop us, sir. You ain't going to stop us. You ain't going to stop us doing I'm what we're going to do, sir. If okay? you touch anything, you will see. If you touch anything, you will see. So, so now it's going down to threats, is it, sir? Yeah. The landlord should have written you and said, I'm not happy with you one month. Uh, you give me quarterly, you have to sort it out. No one sending you, Lord. Do us a favour, mate. Can you just turn your volume down? Okay, get the Just turn your volume down. You are not locking that door. You are not allowed to lock us in this place. Do you understand? If Shoeb and his friend lock the agents in, they could be arrested for wrongful imprisonment. With the situation turning ugly, will the agents be able to recover the £3,000 debt they came for? The agent's deadline for payment has come and gone. Switch the light off. Thank you very much. Close the business. Shoeb still hasn't made any offer to settle the debt. So now Stuart and Ian have no option but to seize goods in a volatile situation. We'll take these out the front door, Ian. Yo, listen. Yo, don't touch my stuff. I told you oh. before. Okay. Don't touch my stuff. So we're going to be removing goods, sir. I told you, sir, the goods are getting removed. I told you. Sir, the stuff's getting removed, sir. The stuff's getting removed, sir. Yeah, the stuff's... You're threatening me, sir. You threaten me. If they think on Ivers, you will be arrested. Heavy, come on, heavy, come on. Heavy. You're on fire, come on. Heavy. Come on, somebody heavy, come on. 
So. Help me, come on. Help me, come on, I said. What do you mean, hurt you, sir? Help me, What do you mean, hurt you? Help me. What do you mean? Alright. So, you do. You're doing all sir, that what's going on that back. You're doing all sir, that what's going on that back. You're just know they're going to put that stuff back, sir. You're not big, man. You think you're a big, man. These assets have been seized, sir. Oh, my God. There are many ploys that defendants use to try and stop us doing our job and collecting payments. But they can be rude, they can be aggressive, they can, they can lie, they can pull as much wool over our eyes as possible, but it's not going to deter us from the way that we do our job. Shoeb's business is at serious risk, but he still won't accept he should be paying rent quarterly, which means he's in debt. Rent is clear. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm seeing every month. I'm chilling every month and the bank statement went to his account. Listen, okay. listen, what rent do you want? What rent do you I've want? I've told you, sir, it needs to be paid quarterly. The agents have no choice but to continue dismantling the shop. Get your hands off me. Or I will call the police, you will be arrested. And by the way, if you try, if this breaks right now, it's your fault. If this breaks, it's your fault. I'm going to break it. Honestly, I'm going to break it. Sorry, it's not worth It's criminal damage now. This no longer belongs here. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. It's not worth breaking, is it? This one It's not worth breaking. Just leave, leave Mr. Toilet to do what he needs to do. Just leave Mr. Toilet You are obstructing me from doing my job. Yeah. Stuart and Ian have been in the shop for over two hours. But the assets in the takeaway won't cover the £3,000 debt. And Shoeb is still refusing to pay the money owed. At an impasse, Stuart calls the office for advice. So I don't really, I'll be honest with you, mate. I'm banging my head against the wall at the moment. They've, he's got 15 quid in his business account. There's a few onions in the back and a few peppers uh, and a clay oven. Where do you go, mate? You know what I mean? He's, he's not, he's not going to pay it. With little hope of recovering the debt today, Stuart decides to give Shoeb one last chance to save his business. So what I'll do is, OK, let's do it in the most basic principle. Yeah. I will put everything on a control goods agreement for 24 hours. OK. OK. In 24 hours, okay. if you don't find that payment of yeah. £2,924, okay. we will be coming back to have the goods removed. OK. okay? So this time tomorrow, if we don't have that payment in full, we will be coming back to remove your goods, whether you like it or not. All right? OK. You know, you're not coming tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. Excuse me. It's my business day. You, come, you can't come tomorrow. I'll be coming you tomorrow. Have, you have to come on Monday. No, I'll be coming tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you 24 hours. Okay. No problem. Yeah. OK, you go. In a fraught, difficult and emotional situation, you need to keep calm and you need, you need to think with a clear head because it's quite clear that people be put in situations that they can't think clearly because their emotions have completely overtaken them. But you, as a High Court Enforcement Agent, have to oversee that and just think of the site of the target, which is a payment. Um, have you got a contact number? Huh? Have you got a contact no, number? No, for you, I'm sorry. No? Uh, we'll right, just take the man in front. I'll just stand in front. Oh, yeah, right, OK, so there's a control goods agreement. We'll see you in 24 hours. Thank you very much. Best thing for him to do now is pay his rent. Pay his what? Pay his rent. You have to find a decent job for yourself. Shoeb's business is safe for now, but the agents could be back. I'm more annoyed that we haven't got any money, but he's shown us the account he's got £15 in it. So he's literally living month by month. If we don't get a payment in 24 hours, then we'll just be coming back to take control of the goods. Evictions across the UK are occurring at an alarming rate. The latest figures from a leading debt charity reveal that 42 properties are being repossessed every day. That's nearly two every hour. Eight fifteen a.m. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Phil Short are heading to Ilford, Greater London to carry out an eviction. Three, two, one. Arrive at one On the right. The landlord's representative is waiting at the property. Nice to see you. He wants to make sure the tenants leave today. They've occupied this property for about five years. They're not paying rent. They're basically occupying it without the permission of the landlord. And the landlord isn't based in the country. This one here? Yeah. They're saying they've got a tenancy agreement. The landlord's not here to verify 
So he's basically taken it through the legal channel. No one is answering the door. We don't believe they're in there, there's no gas or electric going in. The High Court writ allows the agents to gain entry by force if necessary. Well done, sir. Thank you. Door click behind the door. Just shithole. Can you believe that people live like this? No. A lot of the properties that we go to, I do find in a lot of the cases, at least half the cases, their living conditions are absolutely appalling. It doesn't cost money to tidy things up. The property is now repossessed. But inside, Paul and Phil get a shock. Has he hot and wired the electrics? Yeah, the electrics are hot and wired. Everyone thinks no one's here? Yeah. The wiring in the property has been set up to avoid the electricity meter. It's potentially lethal. If you look down behind the door, that's a direct feed coming straight into the house. And apparently, there's been this homemade wiring by unskilled people that think that they can um, beat the system by bypassing their electric somewhere, whether that's going next door's business or what. But there's all kind of live cables that are just ended off with a bit of tape. You got that power? Despite the dangerous conditions, Anybody here? the team must make sure the property is empty. Anybody here? There's steps and all sorts. It's been abandoned some time. Yeah. Inside the bedroom, Phil finds what appears to be boxes of an illegal narcotic called cat, traditionally used in the Somali community. What else is it? Just be careful of stairs. Yeah. Then the agents make an even more shocking discovery. There's someone in bed here. The property isn't empty after all. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement agents. We have a writ to repossess these premises. You have to go. No. No. Yes, please. OK. All right. Is there anybody else here? Is there anybody else here? Where? The man directs them towards the back bedroom, which is also occupied. We're High Court Enforcement agents. We've come to repossess this property. Do you understand what you need to do? You need to get your kit together now and leave immediately. Why would I leave? I don't know. Can you get your kit together? Give you 20 minutes, get your stuff out. All right, thank you very much. Ten minutes later, the men are dressed and downstairs. One of them claims he's a long-term tenant. The other is a guest who has some questions for Paul. Okay, did you ask yourself how long you live here? Six years, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't need to. Now he's coming somewhere and saying, leave it out. That's not, uh, landlord doesn't have right to send someone. The landlord has the right to do that. It's been changed to the High Court and we're here today. He has to leave. It's shocking for me, she still someone live here, you saying, so it's going to the street. Or maybe the landlord may him treating him bad. Someone needs to be uh, he, right to well, you, well, right. If he gets the landlord's number, you can speak to the landlord, but I still want you to pack your things to leave. Letters warning them of the eviction have been sent, but the tenant doesn't seem to understand what's happening. The agents must get the men out today. I would suggest that you get your belongings, passports, pounds, charges, all your personal belongings. <clears throat> 
What's boss belong? These guys here, I can move like this, like that. And I'm nowhere to go. You right? can talk to me all your no, life. No, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm no, telling no, you I'm what saying, I know. That's I'm what you're telling me. It's now 10 past nine. The longer you talk to me, the less time you've got to pack. Because at half past nine, the doors will be locked. The deadline is set, but the men still show no signs of going. In 20 minutes, we will lock the tenancy. No, 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 I'm not going with that. With the tenant refusing to leave, Paul's eviction has now reached a standoff. A friend of the men, Musa, has arrived to act as translator. My name is Paul. Yeah, my name is Musa Ali. OK. I would like to you. If you go and have a word with him, tell him he's got to go. Yeah. Thank you. Musa has been through the process himself. Look at high court ticket, my friend. Yeah. What do you want high court? Yeah. They understand. Yeah. They only need because you come. You no, didn't. Like this. They didn't get any notice. There is no notice. Well, I'll explain. I can understand. I can okay. understand. I can. Yeah. Understand. I'll explain to them. Yeah. So when we come, yeah. right after the county court, there is no notice. I can no, understand. Hundred percent. It happened to with me myself. Me. Yeah. With my family, my kids. Yeah. The tenant claims that he has been paying rent to the landlord. What <laughs> about? He says his requests to get the house repaired were ignored. Maybe you are not in the, uh, it's not in your position, but he's saying like the eviction is illegally because we requested the landlord to and uh, and uh, to and uh, fix the property. Right. So, yeah, this is signed off by the High Court, yeah. like the highest court in the country. I know, we, we know so, how it's called, right. yeah, the Royal... Before you start throwing out that this is illegal, yeah. this would not be signed off by the High Court mm -hmm. if this was anything but legitimate. Mm -hmm. Right? OK. So, but there is no reason for that. I have to win time in the sea and I also have to win time in the sea. What kind of information? With Musa's help, the tenant and his guest start packing. The voice of reason has arrived. Yes. No, the high court is high court. Nobody can say anything. We can understand that. That's it. If he does need to come back, you'll have to speak to the landlord. Landlord, that's it. Yeah, I explained to him. Yes, All right, sir. And, uh, thank you very much for coming. Do I do appreciate your help. OK, thank you. OK, that's all squared. Sometimes the man who's, the man who's just yeah, come in is the voice of reason. It does, yeah. He obviously knows the score. The tenant is now homeless. Of course, he has to find it somewhere to stay. He cannot stay outside, isn't it? Despite all his years of experience, Paul is still shocked by the conditions in the flat. What an absolute tip that is. I mean, you wouldn't keep animals in a place like that. It's absolutely filthy. Absolutely filthy. Money Advice Service has reported that the number of new business loans underwritten by a personal guarantor is increasing. But with 9 out of 10 new businesses folding in the first two years, it's often the guarantor who's left to shoulder the financial burden. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Shropshire, with a writ for one of the largest debts they've had to recover. £61,000, the result of an unpaid business loan taken out by an employment training company. We are off to Mr Mark Gibson, yeah. and the company is called Image Match Social Enterprise CIC. Mr Gibson's company is no longer trading, but he signed as a guarantor for the loan, and now he's personally liable for the debt. So we are now going to his residential address where apparently he's been living for 15 years. Because the debt is so large, the agents are on the lookout for any sizeable assets that could be seized if the debtor can't or won't pay. Mm, this is interesting, isn't it? I reckon that's what, four mil? Oh, no, it's more than that, mate. All sorts of people get into debt. It doesn't matter what house you've got, what car you drive, 
Everybody gets themselves into debt. Lots of house. Collect a few more writs and uh, you get a house like this. Hello there. Sorry to disturb you. We're uh, we're after a Mr. Mark Gibson. Yep. Is that yourself, sir? Not me. No. <laughs> Doesn't live here. Um, can you see the big building over there? Yes. It's on the left. It's part of that building. Thank you very much for your help. The agents discover that Mark Gibson lives in a cottage on the estate. Here we go. There's a car parked outside. It's a potential asset, so the agents block it in. Hello. Hello. Hello there. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. We're after Mr. Mark Gibson. He's not here at the moment. But are you able to get him on the phone? I'll try. Even though Mark isn't there, the agents have the right to search the house for assets. Mark, it's me. Um, there's some gentlemen that have just walked in the house. You're on private property and you need to leave now. We won't be leaving, I'm afraid. Is he on the phone there? I can speak He's... to him. Two minutes. Okay. I mean two minutes. Uh, hello, Mr Gibson. Mr Gibson, good afternoon. My name's Mr McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. We've got a High Court writ um, to collect an outstanding balancer of £61,145.33. pence. We have gained entry to the property through peaceful means, so we are... You are not through peaceful means. OK, can you spare me one second, OK? We need to discuss this matter, OK? Out of my property, please. We won't be. I'll be, I'll be staying inside your property. I'll be, st I'll be staying inside the property, so, until we get this resumed. Get my son. OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass you back now, OK? He's inside the property and he won't go outside. We're not here to cause distress, OK? Well, you're causing we're, me yeah, distress. I've got to go here. and get my little boy. No, I understand okay? that. But, not but we won't be leaving the property. But we won't no, be leaving the property. No, you're not staying inside. We will be. No, you're okay. not. Well, I'm not we here. Are, you are right, not. Okay. I need to make it clear to you. We have a high court writ to access the property. The agents have the right to remain in the property to draw up a controlled goods agreement. This lists any valuable items which can be seized if Mark Gibson can't or won't pay. Can you do a quick controlled goods agreement? Just have a look. Well, well how am I supposed to get my... Is there anyone else in the property? No. No. And why are you going in? You're not I'm going to make a controlled goods agreement. Vic looks for any assets that could be seized to offset the debt. Five minutes later, with the agreement complete, the agents leave the house. He's on his way back. Stuart moves the van so that Mrs Gibson can leave to collect her son. I just want to tell you I'm sorry about this. I mean, I know it's, it's nothing to do with you. I know it's nothing to do with you. Just go and get, just go and get your son. That's the important thing. The agents will wait outside for Mark. But the control goods agreement gives them the right to re-enter the property by force if he doesn't show up. I feel sorry for her, I do. It's nothing to do with her. Unfortunately, the data has landed on her door now. Thirty minutes later, Mark Gibson arrives home. Here's your high court writ, sir. So we're here to collect outstanding sixty-six thousand six hundred and forty-two. No, no, look, look, look. Oh. Oh, I appreciate. No. Because, of course, the thing is, I've not, not received anything. You need to make a payment today. If not, we are instructed to remove goods. OK. Because we've already been inside the property, so we can, if needs be, we can get a locksmith to re-enter yeah. the property. You need to make at least 50% today. 50%? Yeah. Of that? Yeah. 30 grand? Yeah. Today? Yeah. Well... What can you raise? I am prepared to work with you, I know that. <laughs> but, what, but what can you raise? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm a human. Yeah, no, I understand that, but this is a bill that's been outstanding that hasn't been paid for that you've signed a personal guarantor for, sir. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you've signed it on the basis that you could clear it should anything happen. So we're in this situation now, so you need to try and raise some funds. But, you, but I, I, look, you know what, I'm not going to mm -hmm. jerk you around... And no, say, no, I understand you know, that. You're going to wait 45 minutes just to yeah. say... No, sorry, guys, you're not going to get 50%. No, no, I understand that, but, but see what you can do, OK? Yeah. And then what I'll have to do is I'll have but to even, make a call. even 20% of that, yeah. you know, because 20% of that is still 12 grand. Yeah. It's not going to happen, yeah. you know? OK. It, I'm yeah. not going to... Why lie? Yeah. Why, no, why? you're right, you're right, sir. I know, but like I said, I can give you a bit of time to see what you can raise, yeah. OK? Yeah. So we'll take it from there, sir, and uh, we'll speak in 45 minutes, all right? When we deal with guarantor debts, they need to step up to the plate and accept responsibility for their own actions. If you're a guarantor and you've signed for it, it is your debt. Don't stand and stare. Get on the phone and start making some calls. 
Mark starts to try and raise some cash. Half an hour later, he makes an offer. All I can do is um, sign a standing order or yeah. direct debit yeah. for two grand a month. You can do that, sir, but we need a payment today. Yeah, oh, you need to make I, some again, short payments I've, today. I've got no, I've got no physically. Right, we'll, we'll have to remove goods from the property. That's, that's my, my private property. It is, but the two keys are going to be enough, sir. I know. It's a £66,000 debt, sir. If you haven't come to an acceptable arrangement, then the client will then be issuing a statutory demand, which is bankruptcy, which means that the house will be at risk because you are a homeowner. Mark's house is now potentially on the line. As the reality of his situation sinks in, his business associate arrives. So, uh, yeah, what's... Uh, I'm just going to make the payment now. A few minutes later, Mark makes his final offer. Two, two and a half is the most, is the most I can get. Right. Is that what you're preparing yeah. to propose? Yeah. So I'll have to speak to the office about it, but the thing is, if they decline it, Mm -hmm. I will have to get the transport involved for goods to be removed. Right. Stuart calls the office. With an offer of just £2,500 on a £61,000 debt, he's not optimistic. He says he can't put his hands on that amount of money at the moment. So that's where we're at at the moment. Um, is what it is. I'll, re I'll relate the information on. Mark's offer has been rejected. It's going to have to be five grand today, mate, some way or another. And then in seven days' time, 15,000 to be paid, and then we can go into an agreed payment plan. He obviously hasn't got five grand. You see what you can do? What do you reckon, Vic? Yeah, I reckon I've paid, mate. I think the business partner's got something. Twenty minutes later, there's still no sign of any payment. So where we are, guys? What's happening to this payment? I'm just trying to work out, because yeah. I haven't got my cards with me, right. what account it's coming from and how to get it to you. No, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. An hour ago, you told me I can do on a debit card right now, OK? So what I'll do is I'll give you five more minutes okay. and then I'll be ringing transport to take control of the goods okay. inside the property, okay. all right? The threat of removing goods finally prompts payment. Mark's associate, James, pays two and a half thousand pounds. Well, I just need to take a photo of that. Mark Gibson has to pay two and a half thousand pounds tomorrow and a further 15,000 pounds in seven days. All right, speak to you tomorrow. So we roll, Vic. That's how we roll, brother. Boom. But if Mark doesn't pay up tomorrow, his house and his family's possessions are at risk. And the team will be back. In London, rising rents and a lack of affordable homes have led to a thriving illegal subletting market. Local councils are cracking down on tenancy fraud and evictions in the capital are on the rise. Steve and Ben Pinner are High Court enforcement agents. Today, they're on their way to Acton, West London, to carry out an eviction. This job is a writ of possession. Whose name's on the writ? It's a Nicoletta Pataki. All the agents know is that the tenant, Nicoletta, has breached the terms of her tenancy agreement. There's a road there you could have gone down. Yeah, there is. The landlord took the case to the High Court, and the agents have come today without warning. So we're going to stop here, because there's nowhere to park further ahead. All right, OK. Ben and Steve have a key to the property. Better knock on the door, make sure they're not here. If no one's home, the writ allows them to enter and change the locks. Hello? Oh. Hello. Hello there. We have an order here. Yeah? You must leave the property today. Really? Yeah. It's from the High Court. It's a writ of possession for this property. You have an hour to get your personal effects together. Today? The eviction has clearly come as a shock. So this isn't actually you? You're not Nicoletta? No, 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 no. OK. No, no Nicoletta. I don't know. I don't have idea who is Nicoletta. It seems the tenant named on the writ doesn't live in the house. 
you rent it from someone else. Yeah, you shouldn't we have rent been. in the yeah. rooms. Yeah. So you, we don't have the idea about this. Yeah. What can I do? Nothing can change this, unfortunately. The repossession order means that anyone else living in the house must leave today. I know this is not your fault. What we'll do is we'll change the locks, lock the door, and they'll make an arrangement to come back and collect the stuff. If you start to get your bits and pieces together, mm -hmm. we can change the locks and everything. OK, that's, that's it. it. OK, Sorry. so... <laughs> Sunday, OK. Now the agents are inside, the house has officially been repossessed. We can change the locks and everything. This lock and the back door. A locksmith is on hand to open up any locked doors. So that one we're going to have to get into. Hello. Hello. All empty. Oh, this one's open. There's another person in here. Hello. If you want to get dressed and come out... Could you put some clothes on? Sorry. You better knock on all the other doors. Someone There's in someone that else. one. There are more tenants in the house than Steve and Ben expected. They start to suspect the house may have been sublet. OK, I only need one opened up here, which is this one. But upstairs, they're in for a surprise. God, there's loads of rooms. One, two, three, four, five, six rooms. Six rooms and as many fridges. It's now clear this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. This three-bedroom semi isn't all that it appears. It's now clear the three-bedroom house has been converted into six separate bedsits. Bloody hell, they split this down and split this down and split this down, and they? You bet. I love that. The radiator's, like... Shared. <laughs> they built a wall over the radiator. Who adapted it, we, we'll have no idea. But I don't think it's 100% legitimate by any means. There's not a fire door in the building. The house has been sublet to the current tenants without the landlord's permission. Have you seen what's in here? Shower. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite clever, really to convert under the stairs into a shower. This sort of thing is very common where somebody rents a property and then they just sublet it. He rents it for maybe, what well, I don't know, say £500 a month. And he, ch and he gets, like, £50 a week off of each person. There might be six, seven rooms in here. So he's making a good killing. The tenants have no idea that they are living here without the owner's consent. Ben finds a note about the rent collection. The rent money needs to be ready to collect in the morning from 9am, otherwise there is a £30 penalty charge. He's got some cheek, hasn't he? I know. Cheek. We're coming across subletting in a phenomenal scale. Um, somebody takes the property, rents it onto someone else. It's unfortunate that the people that we're throwing out are totally oblivious to it all. And the person who's at the end of the chain is paying their rent and they think everything's fine. Steve spots an outbuilding at the end of the garden. With his knowledge of subletting scams, he has a hunch this might be more than it seems. Somebody lives in there. Jesus. Unbelievable. The outbuilding has been converted into a studio apartment. Oh, there is a bathroom in there. So there could be somebody actually in here. Because the shower's still hot. No. OK. The tenants may be unaware of the scam, but Steve and Ben must still get everyone out today. You have to pack your clothes and leave today. Today? Really? The person who's rented it to you shouldn't have done. Yes. So you're, unfortunately, in the middle of something that is no fault of your own. Sure. But the house has to be taken back. Yes. So, unfortunately, you have to leave. Um, Hello, sir, are you OK? Yeah, all right. Ben, yeah. would you need me to explain something to you? Yeah, What's please, going on? Please. What's your situation here? You... I'm living here two years, paying my rent on time. OK, OK, calm down, calm down. What's been happening is the man you're paying it to 
rents it off the landlord. Right, yeah. And he's subletting it to you without permission. All right, that's the problem. He obviously yeah. never told you because he wants you to keep paying oh, him the rent. Nice. I'm living here 11 years. and in heaven, 11 years? Not here, I'm oh. in London, and it happens to me six times. And what do you do? I'm working in glass factory. How much do you pay for your room? 160 a week. Wow. And I paid my rent all the time, on time. Right. Anyway, what can I do now? Take my stuff and that's it. The situation with when there is sublet, it's obviously not fair because the people living here don't know anything about it. A lot of these people come over from Europe to work. They're more vulnerable to the situation because they're not well versed on the practicalities of the housing law within the UK and how the system works. And they're just being taken advantage of. Excuse me, as I'm reading this, yes. it says something Nicoletta Palaki. I never, Correct. never met her. I know. Who's That's that? the person who's rented this property illegally and subletted to you illegally. OK. Two of the tenants are away in Spain. It's down to the other housemates to pack up for them. My flatmates need things, need clothes, need... Uh, and I don't know what they need. Another tenant is preparing to leave. What's being done to you is not fair, we understand that. But when you're renting, you need to try and make sure, I know it's not always easy, you're renting off legitimate people. You were living here for one year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All the tenants are now homeless. It's not fair, because they come in and you must to go in one hour. And we didn't... We didn't uh, no, anyway. It was another unfortunate repossession. The people in the house knew nothing about that we were coming, so they are in the middle of it, not knowing anything about it. It's coming ever, ever increasing in London, isn't it? Yeah. They see it as a good business, don't they? 